Hello. Um, so I'm going to be giving a really quick overview of what I worked on during um, the weekend's American Greeting Card Hackathon that they they came to RIT and put together. Um, if I can launch it up very quickly. So what this basically is is um, I was very interested in in American Greeting Cards initial challenge, not really a challenge, um, but but motto that they went into the hackathon with, um, does, talking about how they they look to to with their greeting cards inspire people to to communicate with each other and spread love and things like that, um, and that got me thinking about AI. Um, oddly enough. And so I tried to design a system that would, would have some emergent behavior that might imitate some of those qualities that they tried to talk about. And I came up with Boy Meets Girl. So Boy Meets Girl is an emulation of human empathy. Um, basically, it's trying to take that emotion and break it down into very, very component forms and try and figure out what makes people act the way they do. Um, it's not perfect um, by any means of the imagination, um, and it's not necessarily accurate, and it doesn't necessarily reflect all of my views about what happens when, when we communicate with each other, but um, it was a lot of fun to make, and I'll give a quick overview of how it works. So each of these people that you'll see on the screen, I can mouse over them, is an AI agent. And um, at the moment, they know only one thing about the world, that they like flowers. You can see I mouse over one of these flowers, um, and it's a beautiful flower. Each of these agents has a favorite color, um, represented by a numeric value. Um, so this one's favorite color is red. And he's about, he's, he's reasonably interested in flowers. Um, this one's a little bit more interested in flowers. His color is, is red as well. Um, He's a bit happier than this one because he, he's managed to collect more flowers of his favorite color. This person's looking at blue, and no one's really paying any attention to the greens. Now, I am also an agent. You can see me moving around next to the mouse cursor. Um, and I also have a favorite color, one, which I think actually is green. Let me check that really quick. Pull the blue. Oh, no, my favorite color is blue. Um, so none of us really care about the green flowers. Now, at the moment, all of these agents know is that picking up a flower of their favorite color will make them happier. So all of their AI is directed to the fact of just grabbing flowers of that specific color. And they're not paying any attention to anyone else around them. I can change that by, you can see I have some flowers in my inventory right now. And I can grab one of these flowers and drag it out. And as soon as these people stop moving, there we go, I will give this flower to this person. Um, now, this person gets a little bit happier because I just gave him a flower of his color. Um, you also notice that he's interested in one person. Um, so he is more, he's, he's paying attention to what happens, and, and he forms a connection with me. Um, and, and he starts to want to make me happy. Now, making me happy won't actually make him happy or anything like that. This isn't a very complicated simulation along those lines. Um, but it does become important for him to be important for him that I am happy. Um, and he looks for ways to do that. Now, again, he doesn't know anything about me, though. He's just paying attention to what happens. Um, he did learn something when I gave him that flower, though. He learned that giving someone a flower means that they'll receive a flower. Um, and when I pick up this green flower, he also learns that, okay, if I pick up a flower, I receive the flower. Um, so what I need to do, and my favorite color is blue, is I'm going to go find a blue flower to pick up. And this one right up here will do perfectly fine. And you'll see that now he comes over. And if you watch my inventory, you'll see that he actually just gave me a blue flower. Um, so what's going on in the back end here is that each of these agents has a, a very simple model of causation built into them. So because this person is interested in what happens, whenever he observes me doing something, um, he, he waits a specified amount of time later, depending on how interested he is in me, and observes the environment to see what happens. And then he draws correlation between that and the other action. So when he observed me picking up the red flower, or not the red flower, the blue flower, sorry, um, he noticed that I became happier. And he drew a correlation between the two 
disconnected events and formed an action-reaction pair and said that when he picks up a blue flower, that'll make him happy. Now, remember that he already had some action and reaction pairs built into him. Um, So he knew when I first gave him the flower and he first started paying attention to me, he figured out that, oh, okay, if someone gets a flower, um, I can, if, if, so, if I give someone a flower, that means that they get a flower. Um, so he was able to also put those together. He knows that giving a flower means getting a flower. And because he saw me picking up the blue flower, he knows that me getting a blue flower makes me happy. So he looked in his inventory and he said, I happen to have a blue flower. If I give it to him, he'll get the flower and that will make him happy. And that's important to me. Now, because he's paying attention to what I do, he'll also pay attention to other people when I start interacting with him. So I'm going to give this guy a blue flower. And you'll see that he just came over and interacted with that man. So, because he saw me interacting with that person, he formed the correlation, hey, this guy that I never noticed before, he likes blue flowers too. Um, and again, this is all, all emergent. None of this is scripted. Um, so, so he came over and he gave him a blue flower to make him happy. And now the two of them are paying attention. This guy's observing me and observing the other people around me. So you'll see he came over to grab a green flower, and I will... Um, draw his attention to that these people like red flowers by giving one to one of them. And you'll see he's going to come over, and um, you won't be able to see it on the inventory, but um, as soon as this guy gets stops moving and lets him catch up, you'll see he just gave that person a red flower right there. And now they're sort of interacting with each other. There's actually an interesting bug that comes out of this, because my simulation is rather simplistic. You'll find that these people start to form action reaction they're a little bit too smart for the world that they live in um so you'll see right here that the happiness numbers are, are sort of spiraling out of control um and that's a a not a bug but a limitation in the way i coded the system um losing a flower of your favorite color um doesn't cause you to become any less happy which is is sort of unrealistic to how the real world works in that regard um so what these two people have figured out is that they both like the um is that they both like the the color, or maybe not. Hmm. Oh! Okay, well, this guy's smarter than I thought he was. Um, <laughs> what this guy has figured out is that this guy over here, whose favorite color is zero, is willing to give him blue flowers. Um, and every time that he gives him a blue flower, he'll become happier. Um, and again, causation-wise, and, and he's intelligent enough to, to form this event causes this event to happen, causes this event to happen. He's found out, if I give him a blue flower, he'll give it back to me, that'll make me happy. That's an ideal situation. So what he's doing, um, which is a lot more emergent than I actually expected this demo to become, is he is constantly giving every flower that he receives from this person right back to him. And because this person wants him to be happy, he's giving it right back. So he's sort of... Um, rig the system there in a way that I didn't actually expect for this. Um, which I guess is good for a demonstration, to, to be surprised by your AI. But um, he's going to ignore me because at this point, because there's there's pretty much nothing I can do that, that takes him out of this amazing situation that he's in. Maybe I can break it, though, by giving this guy a flower of my favorite color. If I give him a blue flower, um, possibly he'll come over. And, and give it back to me. Oh, I need to give it from my inventory. Sorry. Drag that in. Possibly he will come over and start interacting with me as well. This guy is also... So I'm not sure exactly what's happening here. This guy is in the equation, definitely. It's possible that this guy might be giving the flowers to him. Who gives them to him? Who gives them to him? I definitely know that this is the instigator of the loop. Um, and this guy is definitely giving flowers, um, but he's not giving flowers. He's not giving red flowers. It's possible he's. It's possible that this is is a complete circle, that he's giving um, because he cares about this person's happiness. He's giving um, the blue flowers to to one forty eight that I moused over right now, and one forty eight is then transferring them to the 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 sort of manipulative person here. 
Um, in any case, they've they've put that model together. Um, yeah, so and that's that's the basic system right there. Um, there's a lot more complicated things that can happen. Obviously, this is a behavior that I didn't anticipate when I launched the simulation. Um, but but there's support for a lot more things. Um, I coded this in around 20 hours. Um, I got about four hours of sleep during the hackathon, so I I didn't code during that time. But but all the rest of the time, I basically worked on the AI and a little bit on the interface. Um, so there wasn't a huge amount of time to build the system in in sort of unexpected ways. Um, at least not in controllable unexpected ways. Um, so, so there is some support for them being able to judge how much they care about other people. Um, so if this guy really likes red flowers, um, and he knows that I also like red flowers, he might determine that he likes them more than he likes me and not give them to me. Um, that system is supported um, in this version, which is the actual version I demoed um, when the hackathon finished. Um, I actually turned that feature off, um, or at least biased it to the to the point where it doesn't matter, um, because again, I only had around like five minutes to present, and I I just couldn't deal with the AIs doing unexpected things during those five minutes, um, and and it does lead to some weird behavior. Um, there's a cap on how intelligent they are, not just in how many action reaction pairs they can put together but in how good they are at making them initially. Um, and the reason for that is that if they're too good at making them, um, simulations like this where I'm not really sure what's going on tend to pop up much more often. Um, so I'd have people forming action-reaction pairs that were extremely convoluted and sort of advanced, and I couldn't really follow what was going through their heads, and it made for very boring demos. Um, and there's a, some, some, some buggy things as well. Um, the original design would allow me to broadcast myself whether or not I was happy or unhappy with an action, which would have obviously given me a lot more freedom to, to develop the system in unexpected ways. Um, and ultimately, there just wasn't enough time to, to give the person manual control or to incorporate broadcasting unhappy behaviors in. Um, on the more technical side of things, causation is... In this um, simulation, a completely linear model. Um, so one event only leads to another event. Um, one action causes one reaction. And obviously in real life, um, causation is more of an entry, where one event can cause multiple different actions. Um, and, and incorporating that in would substantially increase the complexity and, and, and the resourcefulness of the AIs. But again... Um, there just wasn't enough time for it. In any case, um, this is the simulation. There is actually a GitHub link to this. It's all licensed under the Creative Commons. So if you want to take a look at the code, um, under, of course, the disclaimer that it's it's very, very hacky, um, there are some bugs and there are some sort of broken bits. Um, I will post a link to that. You can feel free to fork it. You can feel free to submit patches, um, anything like that. And hopefully that was mildly interesting to you. And, yep. Yeah.